the Germans secretly muster their enormous armored force at night over eight weeks and wait for bad weather to ground Allied warplanes. On the morning of December 16th, the temperature falls well below freezing and there are snowstorms across the Ardennes. Everything is in place and the Germans strike. And it started in one fell swoop, and we chased away the Americans. The Americans dropped everything. Breakfast was still standing on the tables, and they dropped everything and ran away. They left huge amounts of equipment, fuel and shells. Bad Germans are coming. Let's run. That's kind of what it looked like. The Germans catch the Americans off guard, and the shape of the Ardennes battlefront begins to change, giving rise to a name that will live in U.S. military history, the Battle of the Bulge. At the spearhead of this bulge is the 5th Panzer Army, attacking the weakest part of the American line, held by the U.S. 28th Division and the handful of tanks attached to them. The M4A3 Sherman is the U.S. Force's main battle tank, and it's no match for the German Panther. The Shermans are light and fast, but carry a low-velocity 75mm main gun that cannot penetrate the Panther's heavy frontal armor. Their own frontal armor is just two inches thick, making them highly vulnerable to the firepower of the Panthers. Spread across a front over 15 miles long, the 28th has only 32 Sherman tanks, 57 anti-tank guns, and thousands of battle-weary men. The Ardennes was an ideal territory to accommodate uh, tired troops, weary troops. That's why all these troops here that bedded down on the night from December 15 to 16, they were totally caught by surprise. One of the exhausted soldiers holding the front line with the 28th Division is 23-year-old John Marshall of the 707th Tank Battalion. When the boat broke, we were just going to eat. This lieutenant comes with us club and he knocked all the muskets out of your hand. Leave them lay. Get on your tanks and assemble down at the bottom of the town. They were frozen. And the oil uh, settles down to the bottom of the, uh, the motor. The top of the motor has no oil at all. And the oil now is sludgy, and as a result, it wasn't going to move. And we couldn't get it started. And uh, that's when the tanks pulled out on us. We started putting everything you're not supposed to do I think we had five Bunsen burners on the motor and under the motor and everything else. And uh, uh, luckily we finally got it started. Marshall searches for the rest of his tank unit, unaware that the Germans have already broken through the 28th Division's line. But he's lost and eventually joins two other Shermans in the same predicament. Two other tanks were there when we got down there. The other two tanks saw us come down and they says, we'll follow you. Oh, we, we had no idea where we were going. I jumped out of our tank to guide our tank across the bridge. And uh, when uh, we were safely across, I pointed to the uh, tank commander for him to do the same thing. You know, sooner got over the bridge when there was a tremendous flare. The Germans under the bridge had hit him with a bazooka. 
and uh, the other two tanks, they all got machine gunned uh, when they climbed out of the tanks. The 5th Panzer Army seems unstoppable. All that stands in their way are scattered pockets of U.S. forces, under-equipped, outnumbered, and in Marshall's case, completely lost. We now, we're really on our own. 